very warm welcome to one and all. I am Rohini Ganesh Patwal from Gokhale Education Society's JDC Bitku English Medium High School with the third chapter, second part that is diversity and classification in animals. Students, different animals have developed different shapes to survive in the environment. There is a great variety in the body structure of animals too. The amoeba that cannot be seen with our eyes, the huge elephant, the small snail, the fish that swims in water, a kite that flies high in the sky, butterflies that flit around flowers, a house lizard that crawls on a wall are all animals. Each has different characteristic. Animals have body parts like a head, a neck, a tarso, a tail and limbs for movement. They have various organ systems which carry on various functions inside their body. In this respect too, there is a lot of diversity in animals. We see a variety in animals with respect to their food as well. Since animals depend on others for their food, they are found in places where food is available. Different animals have different methods of obtaining and eating food. This too leads to differences in their body structure. Let us move towards the first one. Unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. Students, take a drop of water from a puddle and place it on a glass slide. Observe it under a microscope. What do you see? When a drop of water from a puddle is seen under a microscope, Innumerable microbes can be seen moving about in it. You will see the continuously moving amoeba. The paramoecium is also a unicellular animal like the amoeba. A horse, a bear, a tortoise are multicellular animals whereas paramoecium, amoeba, euglena are unicellular. Unicellular organisms that are only made up of only one cell are called unicellular animals. Whereas organisms that are made up of more than one cells are called multicellular animals. Let us move towards oviparous and viviparous animals. Students, we have learned that producing another living thing like oneself is called reproduction. A hen legs egg and hatches them. After a few days, the young chicks hatch out of the eggs. A cow gives birth to a calf. Before that, the calf grows within the cow's body. According to the mode of reproduction, Animals are classified into two, that is oviparous animal which lay eggs and viviparous animals which give birth to their young ones. And the third type is vertebrates and invertebrates. Animals with a vertebral column are called as vertebrate animals whereas animals without a vertebral column are known as invertebrates. See students, you can see in the figure. Now let us see what are the terrestrial, aquatic and amphibian animals. According to their habitat, animals are usually classified into terrestrial and aquatic animals. However, animals like a frog, salamander, toad live in both places, namely land and water. Therefore, they are called amphibian animals. A kite, an eagle, a crow, a butterfly, a honeybee, all fly in the air. Though they live in different places, these animals are said to have an aerial mode of life. Always remember students, in the living world, a lot of diversity is seen both in animals and plants. Every plant and animal is unique. We should all make efforts to conserve this diversity in the living world. What we have learned students, plants are classified on the basis of their height and the shape of stems, periods of life cycle and habitat. Animals are classified on the basis of the cell structure, vertebral columns, method of reproduction and habitat. And here we have finished this lesson students. Hopefully you understood the lesson. Students you have to write difficult words five times, definitions three times. And you have to write all the exercise in your classwork notebook. Students, I am going to give you one activity also that you have to complete in your activity notebook. And the activity is you have to write an essay on diversity in plants and on diversity in animals.
बी सेफ एट यू होम बाय स्टूडेंट्स